This is Jake with Van Dyke Software. Today I'm going to show you how to configure SecureFX to synchronize a local folder so that it looks exactly like the contents of a remote folder. I'm using SecureFX version 8.5 and the idea is that I have a folder named Receipts here on my local machine that I want to make look exactly like a folder of the same name that resides over here on this remote SFTP server. I've made some changes to SecureFX's default configuration aimed at improving file transfer performance when there are a lot of files to transfer. First, I opened Global Options and in the File Transfer Options category, I increased the number of files that can be transferred in parallel from 1 to 4. Then, I opened the properties of my saved session and here in the File Transfer Advanced category, I enabled this option to use a separate transport for every connection. Now it's time to create a synchronized session. The first step is to connect with the saved session to the remote host. You can see the local folder on the left and the remote session connection on the right. Next, select the local folder you want to mirror to. In my case, it's this local receipts folder. Then select the remote folder that you want to mirror from. In my case, it's this remote receipts folder. Now open SecureFX's Tools menu and choose Synchronize, and then press the Add button to add a new synchronization session. Specify a name for the session. I'm going to use Receipts. Now it's time to set the mode. This can be somewhat confusing because the terms Source and Target are so often associated with the terms From and To. To help clarify, I suggest we think of the Source as simply Side A, and the Target as simply Side B. Note that Side A is already set to reflect the local receipts folder path that was selected in SecureFX's local window before we started, and Side B reflects the properties of the active remote tab, its session name, and remote path. Because the goal is to have our local folder, or Side A, look exactly like the remote folder, Side B, I'm going to set the mode to mirror target, since I know that the target really means side B, and I want my local side, side A, to be a mirror image of that remote folder. In other words, I'll be downloading everything in the remote receipts folder. As a side note, for those wanting to accomplish the other direction, if the goal was to have the remote side B look exactly like my local side A, then you would set the mode to mirror source, so that files would be uploaded from the local machine to the remote machine to make the remote folder look like the local folder. In order for the mirror image to be completely accurate, I'm going to enable the Delete Items option. This way, if a file gets deleted from the remote folder, side B, SecureFX will reflect that change by deleting its local copy of that file here in the local folder, or side A. Here in the Advanced section, if needed, I can apply a filter so that only files or folders matching a specific pattern, like .txt files, are included or excluded from the synchronized operation. In my case, I simply want everything, so I won't be using a filter. The Include Subdirectories option here causes the mirror operation to be recursive, including all files and subfolders and their files and subfolders too. I'll also enable the Automatically Transfer Files option, so as long as I have SecureFX running with this synchronized session open, any changes to the remote folder will automatically be reflected on the local side. I've completed this synchronized session setup, so I'll press the OK button and the new entry appears in the list of synchronized sessions. To kick off the Synchronize operation, I'll need to press the Synchronize button. A new Synchronize tab opens and you can see the activity that SecureFX is performing since the local folder I'm mirroring to doesn't have anything in it yet. After the initial Synchronize operation has completed, my local folder now has all of the files that were present in the remote folder. If a file is deleted on the remote system, Back in SecureFX, we can see that that same file on the local side is also deleted because SecureFX was able to detect that the file is no longer there on the remote side. As long as I keep this instance of SecureFX up and running with this synchronized tab open, SecureFX will be monitoring the remote folder for any changes and then reflecting those changes in the local copy of that folder. SecureFX's default monitoring cycle is 15 minutes. If you want faster polling cycles, you can modify the refresh delay setting in SecureFX's global.ini file. This value is specified as an 8-digit hexadecimal number representing seconds. 5 for 5 seconds, A for 10 seconds, and so on. As always, make sure you've closed SecureFX before attempting to save changes to the global.ini file. If I close SecureFX and bring it up a few minutes, hours, or days later, I can simply open the Tools menu, choose Synchronize, and then select the Saved Sync Session and run it. I can also use SecureFX's Task Scheduler to run this Synchronize operation on a schedule. Enable the Synchronize Session option, choose the session, name it, set the frequency, and, well, you get the idea. 
that's all the time we have for this video. Until next time, stay securely synchronized, my friends.